Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. This is a bonus episode where we are going to dig into the details of the Season 7 panel of the Clone Wars series that happened yesterday at Celebration Chicago. So here is the deal. I think our headlines have to be the story arcs that were covered and additional details about those story arcs. Now, the Siege of Mandalore, we'll get to, but <laughs> that one, obviously, we've known about for a while. As far as other story arcs, well, you know, I did a couple of episodes in the past about what story arcs might be included because there were many different story arcs. There were as many as 13 different story arcs that had been planned for the Clone Wars, and some of them had already been handled. Like, for example, Christy Golden's novel Dark Disciple actually covered two different story arcs for the Clone Wars that had been potentially planned, so that kind of narrowed things down. And we knew about the Siege of Mandalore already, so it was just kind of, well, what else is there going to be? Well, we kind of got confirmation of that to some degree in today's panel. For a start, the Bad Batch is going to be one of those story arcs. And the reason why it's not entirely you know, full details about that is because there are two different story arcs that touch on the Bad Batch. One of them is a story arc that was done in the Clone Wars Legacy project where they had story reels for the Bad Batch. And so, you know, they went, um, they went through those stories and Dave Filoni at the panel suggested that, you know, he went back through story reels. And so it kind of indicates that it might be the initial Bad Batch situation. However, there is also a Bad Batch uh, series of episodes where they deal with something on Kashyyyk as well. And the clip that they showed from the Bad Batch uh, episodes was not clear in that sense. You don't necessarily know when in the story arc it takes place. You just get to see the Bad Batch in action against a bunch of battle droids. And they certainly do a heck of a lot of damage, which is pretty cool, of course. Now, the second story arc that they talked about has to do with Ahsoka. And you know, I have to say that that is not one of the ones that I thought that they would be doing because of the fact that in that teaser that they released at San Diego Comic-Con last year, there was you know the scene where Ahsoka is on the hologram and turns around and sees Anakin and Obi-Wan and says, hello master, it's been a while. And the story arcs with Ahsoka that had been previously planned included her having adventures down in the underworld at level 1313 on Coruscant. And as part of the first story arc, finding out that there was actually a you know, Sith temple underneath the Jedi temple. And then the second story arc that involved Ahsoka would be her coming back to, you know, back in contact with the Jedi to try to warn them about something that was, you know, happening or potentially possible with the Sith, you know, and some sort of horrible infiltration of the Jedi Temple and how it might be, you know, having detrimental effects on what's going on with the Jedi. So it seems that, you know, like I thought that that, you know, seemed to be ruled out based on the, you know, hello, it's been a while, but Apparently not all of that has been ruled out because they did show a clip of Ahsoka taking off on a speeder bike and heading down into the underworld. And unfortunately, like you know, the clip that we see, like her speeder bike malfunctions and there's a lot of daring do that happens as a result. Only somebody with Jedi powers would be able to survive <laughs> what happened. But there are two people, two twins that she meets down there named Trace and Rafa. These are new characters who, you know, have, were not mentioned in any previous, you know, Clone Wars Legacy stuff or Ahsoka's Untold Tales, which was the panel that they had at Celebration London back in 2016. So, you know, we don't know very much about that story arc at all, only that she is going to try to live on her own for a while. And also the jumpsuit that Dave Filoni designed for Ahsoka in this phase of her life is one that he claimed that was, you know, was something he was sure that she would want to design for her her universe line of clothing and once Ashley Eckstein saw the <laughs> saw the clip with Ahsoka in that suit she said yeah I'm gonna make that I'm gonna sell that so <laughs> mission accomplished in that regard 
And then, of course, there's the Siege of Mandalore situation, and we will talk about that and about how Dave Filoni very much likes to make Ashley Eckstein cry, and we'll get to that after the break, so stay tuned. Hey there. I'm talking about Star Wars every day, and I could be talking about you and your business as well, especially if it's something that deserves to be heard about by a group of passionate Star Wars fans. Check out SW7x7.com slash sponsors to learn why podcast advertising is one of the most compelling forms of advertising out there. Again, that's SW7x7.com slash sponsors, plural, with an S at the end. Welcome back. At the Ahsoka's Untold Tales panel in London, Dave Filoni told the story of how the Siege of Mandalore kicks off where they're preparing to go fight, but Anakin and Obi-Wan have to be called back to Coruscant because Palpatine has been kidnapped by General Grievous. So Anakin turns over command of the clones to Ahsoka. And there's a moment where she comes out into where all the clones are assembled and they all have their helmets redone so they all have the Togruta markings like Ahsoka does and that moment actually made Ashley well up in tears in London. Well when they were talking about the Siege of Mandalore story arc being the third story arc that they're going to tackle, Dave Filoni showed a clip and said we only have the animation for it right now but you know I know you guys understand that so just know what you're looking at hasn't been rendered hasn't been this that and the other it's not finished. And he showed the scene where Ahsoka goes out and sees all the clone troopers, including Captain Rex, assembled with the new markings on the helmet. And so, of course, Ashley got all, you know, welled up about that again and said, this is the same thing, you know, the same scene that you told me about that made me get like this in London, which, you know, you know, it's probably planned, right? But if it was planned, then it was acted out very well. And then, of course, when they actually showed the trailer, finally, at the end of everything, they turned out that wasn't the case. They didn't have it unfinished. Like, they had the finished version of it in the trailer. So we got to see it yet another time. And so Dave Filoni, perhaps showing a slight trace of a sadistic side in the way that he was playing around with that. Additionally, as far as bringing Maul back into the situation, because he is, of course, going to be a pivotal part of the Siege of Mandalore, you get to hear a line from him saying, I was, you know, hoping for Kenobi to show up for the Siege of Mandalore, and why are you here is how he's referring to Ahsoka. And what Dave Filoni revealed is that, you know, as part of their efforts to make you know, these final episodes, you know, even more compelling than ever before. The technology is better than it was when they were making the series, you know, all this stuff. They actually got Ray Park to come back and wear a motion capture suit to do the fight sequences for the Siege of Mandalore stuff. And of course have Sam Witwer back to do the voice from all, but you know, it's another level of animation by bringing Ray Park to do motion capture stuff for all of their fight scenes. And Sam said he just got to sit back on, you know, the sessions and watch and, and just enjoy himself, which was pretty awesome. They didn't say anything about, you know, whether any, you know, whether Ashley or somebody else was doing motion capture for Ahsoka's scenes like that. So that's still a question that needs to be answered. Another question that needs to be answered, as uh, one of my patrons, Doug Howard, asked, is whether they're going to drop all the episodes at once or whether they're going to release them week by week. I have a feeling that they're going to be, you know, I think this is what I've heard. I, you know, I've gone back and looked for it. And now, of course, I can't find the evidence for it. But I believe that they are going to be live with all 12 episodes from day one when the service debuts on November 12th. So... You know, if you have other details, then by all means, share them wherever you happen to catch this video. But (laughs) anyway, that is going to do it for the deep dive into the details of Season 7 of The Clone Wars as they've been shared with us right now. And that is going to do it for this bonus episode of the show, too. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.